This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a (laughs) sham. (laughs) It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. I'm Lindsay in for Jeff. What's going on, guys? We made it to Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Slow rolling this week. You sound like you weren't <laughs> sure if we were going to make it. You're like, we did it, Jeff. I mean, I keep looking up. I'm like, it's only Tuesday? Yeah, it's a no. slow week. It's, yeah, it's the all good. Holidays are coming. Yeah. Keep on rolling. So Avatar 2 and its director, James Cameron, are being criticized for cultural appropriation by some indigenous people. So the film centers around fictional Navi people who are aliens. But one Native American artist says the film's characters and the story of colonialism borrow heavily from from indigenous cultures and feature a largely white cast. So on Twitter, she asked her followers to boycott the film, saying indigenous cultures were appropriated in a harmful manner to satisfy some white man's savior complex. She also called for an end of the quote, blue face. She also called out racist comments James Cameron made back in 2010 to The Guardian. He mentioned that reimagining Native American history was the inspiration for the first Avatar film. He said, quote, I couldn't help but think that if the Lakota Sioux had a time window and they could see the future and they could see their kids committing suicide at the highest suicide rates in the nation because they were hopeless and they were in a dead end society, they would have fought a lot harder. Yeah, that comment is ridiculous. Mm. Um, you know, it's That's like, to me, I liken that to slavery is a choice, right? That's this, the Kanye comment. Like, who says that? Like, you're not part of that community, and you definitely have not been through anything even the slightest bit close to what that community experienced, that trauma. So, like, why are you commenting? Like, what are you saying? And and also, most movies, and I know this because we sat down with the inner, the head of Pixar. They explain that even movies that are cartoons, they have somebody from that culture breaking down and, and really overseeing the film, normally as an executive producer or at least a consultant in every way. So if this is a film about Day of the Dead, like some cartoons are, they make sure that they get it right, especially in this this time, you but know, that, 2022. And, and that's that's great, and I'm sure they did that kind of to cover their own selves as well. But when you have a, a, you know an imaginary culture that is very similar to an indigenous culture, and it does seem like a story that's played out before for, I think that's the way that they're able to get around such things as like having somebody like a cultural analyst to say this is right, this is wrong. Do I see strong ties to Native Amer- uh, to, in- to indigenous folks and their experience in this country? Absolutely. Do I think that James Cameron's comments were ignorant? Absolutely. But I think this is the kind of conversation that allows us to get away from the deeper conversation about what do we do about the indigenous folks that are here now and struggling now. Because the, uh, you know, I, I have a lot, when I was at Brown, I, I had a lot of friends that were uh, indigenous folks and the situation at the, at the reservations is dire and it still is. So that's a conversation that people don't want to have. People either want to talk about casinos or they want to talk about how it's close to Avatar, but the real conversation is how do we help these folks? And that's a conversation that's quite frankly above my pay, pay, pay grade. Well said. Well, well said. I don't think, it, I, why would James Cameron say that? Because yeah. it was 2010 I mean, is, and people said anything, Erica. I, I mean, <laughs> it's like no one has to speculate because I know that on the conversation on Twitter, a lot of people are like, everyone's so sensitive. This is going too far. Like, it's just a movie. It's imaginary. But James Cameron absolutely gave credibility to the idea that it's just, it's not a coincidence mm-hmm. that it was actually like inspired by that and I and oh, wow wow yeah, if he hadn't you guys yeah, tried harder that right like vibe, if, if he that if, was weird yeah, yeah I know if he hadn't said it I would have a harder time like putting the intention making there the leap. making the leap but, but it's not a leap it's, it's a bridge it's just a step yeah. <laughs> like it's I, again I don't say just an adjustment of tint yeah like it's it's kind of the exact same story yeah him saying that it wasn't great I don't know how I feel about this whole blue face white actors playing that I feel like we're in the middle of that right now and I don't know how I play my friend Jenny Slate gave up a, a character role so that a person of color could play that person on I think Big Mouth but um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that but him saying that has tainted the whole thing now. Well, if you're borrowing a whole culture story, I would think at the very minimum you can do consult- in 2021 or if you started making it two years ago, 2022, is like really just hiring some people from that culture to be the actors. Totally. At the very least, some of them. I don't know what the numbers look like for this film of how many white people were playing all the blue characters or what, but you could at least thought about that. Somebody could have consulted on the film thinking about that. My only thing is if he does hire that them, isn't he then admitting that this is a direct Well, he admitted takeoff. it in 2010. I, I, I can't believe he did that. That was bad. I I can't 
can't that was bad. That, so. Okay. Well, police are looking for Megan Thee Stallion's former bodyguard after he failed to show up to testify in court. Justin Edison was supposed to testify on Friday in the trial of Tory Lanez, who was accused of allegedly shooting Megan in the foot. But Justin never showed up. Megan's lawyer claims prosecutors are investigating whether any witness intimidation is going on. Justin's last Instagram post was from a few weeks ago in Qatar, where he said he was working as a personal security guard for some clients during the World Cup. Looks like he's working hard. <laughs> he's one. Oh, I would have got that picture too. Twice. If I'm there, I'm getting the picture. So <laughs> He's one of the key witnesses in the case because prosecutors say Megan's former friend sent a text to Justin on the night that she was shot that said help, followed by Tori shot Meg 911. Wow, so he needs to show up in court. What do you guys think of how it's playing out? Erica, I know that Refinery29 has a quote that was going around yesterday that Megan is not on trial. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that we need to understand about this. So, yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, we've, we've spoken, I mean, we've spoken about this for years because ever since the story first came out, the, it was, it seemed as though Megan Thee Stallion was the person who was on trial the way that people have gone out of their way to persecute her for, in, in multiple different angles. And I, I just want to be clear, like, I'm a 41-year-old woman and Meg Thee Stallion is a, is a young woman who I look at as, I want to be a, a place of support for someone who really has done nothing. I mean, if, let's, there's so much conversation happening on Twitter. I almost like, I posted something and then I was like, Lord have mercy. Like, I, I mean, really, it just brought everything, the vitriol, everything I out. I saw that on your Twitter. Yeah, it yeah. really did. But I'm like, I look at, especially young black women, as someone who I'd like to support, especially in the situation where they are being unfairly scrutinized. And I look at this situation like, when I see another black woman in her 40s looking at this woman and being like well she deserved this because of x y and z it's like sis what are we doing do we not have enough coming from opposition and outside of the community do we really need this all within mm. it feels and I, I wonder, really disgusting i want to ask you al um as a black man like if we go through this trial and let's say tory lanes is acquitted what do we then do with all the people who decided he was guilty beforehand because he's facing 22 years so do those people who are maybe not journalists or just saying like tory needs to go to jail do they apologize then to this man who you know because she got shot right she's right. the victim but we're trying to figure out who shot her right and most people think it's Tory Lanez but that's why the, the jury is doing its job that's why court the process being played out yeah. so what do you have to say to people deciding it before it even happened well, did, did the people with the R Kelly situation when they found out that he was guilty did they apologize for supporting him people don't apologize and on the internet that's what you have to understand Erica you're trying to look at this situation as a monolith like we as black women we as black men there are subcultures within that. Right. And people that have come, we all come from different homes, different backgrounds, different experiences. We look at, some people look at Megan Thee Stallion and say, I'm gonna support her. Some people look at Meg, Meg Thee Stallion and say, see another lying black woman. And they could have come from the same household. They're just, black people are, people in general are not a monolith. And because of that, we keep running into these situations where I was as shocked as you are to find that she didn't have as much support. I was as shocked as you are to find out that there were people that were so pro R. Kelly, you know? And it, it, we just have to understand that everybody has different reasons for why they react to things, and it's usually from childhood trauma. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll talk about this more in the break, guys. So if you're on YouTube, stay tuned. Coming up on DBL, users online filters inspiration for plastic surgery. Dr. Yoon is telling us all about this potentially dangerous trend. And do kids with famous parents always get a step ahead in Hollywood? That's next. Ew. It's happy holiday season time. From our DBL family to yours, we want to wish you a happy holiday season. A happy holiday season. We didn't get a chance to get to Tori's perspective, but I, I really just, the conversation is so interesting, even amongst my family about what's happening with Megan mm -hmm. the Stallion, because you have to let a trial play out, but also yeah. as a black woman, it's my job to support a black woman when she's, because we're so, less likely to be heard. Mm. And so I'm just trying to, to have the full conversation because there's also 
a black guy's life that's facing 22 years in prison. Right. And so we need to confirm that he shot her. And, and he could be a bad person still, but did he shoot her and needs to go to jail for 22 years is the question that every, right. well, the who, jury in the And who could answer that, that bodyguard? And why is he in Qatar? Is it possibly for extradition issues so he can't be indicted or subpoenaed to come and testify? Did, did I say Qatar wrong? It's no, it can you can say it either way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. article in the New York Times about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. But so you no, think you he's said, hiding is out? Is that your theory? Yeah. Because I had Jesse Smollett vibes. Remember the brothers this Appeared, they went to Nigeria as soon as this went down. So you can't that's be. That's what I was that's thinking. Right. Why do you go to a place that you don't normally extradite from? Yeah, when the you're United about States. to testify in the Meg, what do you? For, did you forget? <laughs> did but you, here's the thing: he's not up for debate in terms of was he? Could he have possibly have been the shooter? No, he has the text no. message. Right. Yes. That's what they right. need. And yeah. if he ignores that and exactly. disappears, but, we don't get that piece of info. But then you also, if you bring up that point, which is what a great is point, it? you also what have to bring it? up the point that one of the key witnesses, Kelsey, her friend who was physically in the car, all of a sudden de developed amnesia. Yeah. But that's so what, Erica, that kind of made me look at Kelsey sideways. That whole thing is like, well, what the heck did Kelsey shoot her? Well, but here's the thing. She has immunity. And so the, uh, there's another theory that's saying that basically because she has immunity that they're trying to make it seem like she could have possibly have shot Megan they're spinning because it on she that. wouldn't be able to be prosecuted for oh, wow. So because of the immunity. also the hush money that allegedly that's was. That's what I think it is. Yeah, yeah. it was a million dollars. Yep. Welcome back. So New York Magazine has declared 2022 the year of the quote Nepo baby, as in <laughs> nepotism baby, or famous kids born to Hollywood stars. But it's their cover that's getting all the attention. It shows the heads of stars like Ooh. Dakota Johnson, Maya Hawk, and Zoe Kravitz photoshopped on babies' bodies. The caption reads, she has her mother's eyes and agent. But some people online pointed out that nepotism in Hollywood has been going on for decades. Actors like Angelina Jolie, Charlie Sheen, Jennifer Aniston, Drew Barrymore, Gwyneth Paltrow, oh my god, I'm tired, <laughs> all have famous family members who were connected to Hollywood. This is like breaking news for some of these people. For me, I just thought they were a star in their own right. No, it's no. like D.C., y'all. It's like D.C. It's everyone is connected by everyone. D.C. is like a Hollywood, but with less good clothing. Like, we don't sh look good. But um, <laughs> it's, it's literally who you know. It's not how talented you are. This is a, this is basic. Of course they but have a step isn't up. isn't this, you of know, of course I, it is. You, I know this is access, so I'm not going to lose, hope I don't lose people, but when I, when I watch football and there'll be an assistant coach and I'll have the last name, and I'm like, oh, that's somebody's son or that's their granddad, but they're like a, a lower level coach. You see, but isn't life who you know? Erica, if you walk up to Al's nightclub, you and Lindsay are getting in free. Your people are getting in free because you know me. Isn't this life that we're Can Tori get in? Tori's a homebody, binger. I would be curious to know the numbers. Out of every Hollywood celebrity who have children, how many of those children are actually in the same industry? How many of those children are successful and are good in said industry? Right. How yeah, because when I look at like family businesses, like it wouldn't be a far leap for me to be a funeral director and take over my father's like you were business. Yeah, right. right. Because I understand like there was kind of an indoctrination in some some way. I mean, I'm not going to, but I could, and a lot of people do for generations and generations. So it almost just feels like the family business, but I'd be interested in knowing like what the numbers truly are. On and that. I do agree with like Maya Hawk real quick from Stranger Things. She's Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman's mm -hmm. baby. She's fantastic. So perhaps it's genetically, you know, you get help from your parents being that way. Well, I think when you're a kid, you watch your parents, and then if you're fascinated by what they do yeah. or interested, then you're always around. So, like, when I used to produce for Melissa Harris Perry, like, she brought her daughter in, and her daughter knew all the Congress people. They all signed a book for her. So, if she gets in politics, I wouldn't be surprised, right? right. Or if she has a talk show about politics, I wouldn't be surprised. And the 
same thing with Tracy Ellis Ross. She talks about being in her mom's shadow. Diana Ross is a big shadow, but she found her own voice, but it was probably a little more difficult for her to figure out what that looks like behind this superstar. Yeah. And she found it later in life because yeah. she put so much work behind it. Right. All right, being told we got to go. So coming up on DBL, <laughs> Dr. Yoon is back. We're talking about him with all, I mean, we're talking about all the people who are trying to achieve perfection in real life by using filtered photos as inspiration. An Instagram video with millions of views says you can ditch your travel size containers in 2024 because airports are getting rid of their limits for carry on liquids. People in the comments are both excited and a little skeptical. So let's verify. Are airports eliminating the 3.4 ounce container limit for carry on liquids in 2024? We went to these sources for an answer. Limits to carry on liquids have been in place since 2006 when UK authorities thwarted a terrorist attack that planned to use liquid explosives hidden in carry-on bags to blow up several passenger planes. Airport scanners at the time had difficulty detecting the chemicals that the terrorists planned to use, so the 311 rule was created. 3.4 ounces of each liquid in one quart size bag, one bag per person. Since then, screening tech for carry-ons has improved. CT scanners, which have been used on checked bags for years, are now being used to scan carry-on luggage in some airports. TSA says these scanners create such a clear picture of the bag's contents that computers can automatically detect explosives, including liquids. The good news is the technology works. The question is, what's the realistic deadline for having it installed? In the U.S., no time soon. A spokesperson for the TSA told Verify, claims that the 3.4 ounce limit on liquids is going away in 2024 are absolutely not true. But that's not the case at some airports in other countries. Amsterdam's biggest airport started using CT scanners for carry-ons back in 2021, allowing travelers to ditch those smaller containers. And the UK says they plan to switch over to CT scanners by 2024, so we can verify that most airports are not eliminating the 3.4 ounce container limit for liquids in carry-ons in 2024. The creator of that viral video posted an apology, clarifying that she was referring to airports within the UK. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Welcome back. What does your AI self look like? Well, the magic avatar trend is the latest thing sweeping across social media from the app Lenza. Earlier, we took the challenge and spoke with Dr. Yoon about the dangers of it. Take a look. These are the ones that look the most like us. Let's look at the boys first. <gasps> Whoa. Oh. Dude. Oh Dude, my gosh. Jeff, you look like good. I look like I <laughs> I look like yeah, I'm. I look sad. like I'm about to smoke a ciggy in a depressing yeah, yeah. car. Motorcycle. Yeah, I like, like Al though. You look super sad. That looked like Al. Let's look at the girls. These are these are the ones that look like us. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, Erica. Erica. Whoa. Tori. Oh, I like I look, my yeah. awesome. I like Sam's. I like. Tori's. I want my pink hair. I, I just want to go on record that. Uh, What's wrong with my face? No, you're not. <laughs> Your avatar looks like it's going to a nightclub. Wait, we, got, no. we have more. We okay. have more. What? Like it went. No, like Wait. it went to a nightclub. These are the ones that don't <laughs> look like the boys. See, these are the ones that don't look like the boys. Okay. more good. like you than the other Air one. Good. With so many people doing this trend, plastic surgeons are now speaking out about the number of people coming into their office to achieve this look. But is that even realistic? So to help us Tori's break it all down, realistic. <laughs> please welcome our favorite holistic plastic surgeon, Dr. Yoon, back to the show. Yay. Hey, Doc. Yay. Doc. Thank you. Let's get right to it, okay? So what do you think should I, listen, what's happening here? <laughs> do I need to duplicate this look and what should I bring to get it done by you? Do you advise <laughs> me? You so you can come into my like office. And bring this to a doctor? Yeah, you can come into my office and ask for it, but I can't necessarily give it to you. So ask, ask all you want. I mean, really, when you look at these, it's like they painted a portrait of you and like paintings from long ago, it's not necessarily all that realistic. Yeah, of course. What specifically is dangerous, this is so silly, about wanting to achieve these avatars? 
Well, the issue is, is that if you use this as a guide and you say, hey, I kind of like how my skin looks here, then you can use it as a realistic guide. But the fact is there's so many people who would look at, look at something like this and not realize that it is not achievable. Mm. And you can undergo procedure after procedure after procedure to try to gain an appearance that just is never going to be achievable in the first place. Wow. All right, Doc, we got to talk about filters and if dating sites could survive without them. <laughs> <laughs> Now, people are, you know, bringing in filtered photos as inspiration for plastic surgery. Is that a good idea? Because it does show you kind of the best case scenario of your face. So does that work? <laughs> so I think that once again, you got to be realistic. If you use a filtered photograph as a way to say, you know, I kind of like how my skin looks here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clean up my diet. I'm going to use good skincare. I'm going to wear my SPF every day. Then it actually can be a very positive thing. But unfortunately, so many people use it as kind of this guide to look in a way that's almost dysmorphic. Mm -hmm. And you can undergo procedures that can actually end up making you look worse. And it can be what we call this kind of downward spiral of cosmetic surgery. Wow. Mm. Now, speaking about how dangerous it is, Dr. Yoon, we have yours. <laughs> so let's take a look at Dr. Yoon's own. Oh, yeah. yeah. Heck, I look like I'm from the Squid Game show. <laughs> do you and do you like that, or do you feel like that's weird to look at? I think it's weird. I mean, it's it's something that I think is fun, and you can put it out there. But unfortunately, with these types of things, there is that small group of people who maybe have real psychiatric conditions right. like body dysmorphia, and they may use this in a way that is not healthy. healthy. Right, 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 right. Okay, so we also need to ask you about another surgery that's making headlines because rapper Cardi B revealed that she had 95% of her butt injections removed. Merry Christmas. And says that people should think <laughs> twice about this type of surgery. I, I appreciate her saying this, but why is she saying this and what are the risks with these types of injections? So this is a huge deal, and I really, I really <laughs> credit Cardi B in coming forward with this. She supposedly had these injections done in a hotel room oh, yeah, yeah. of some type of poly, polymer that was injected into her buttocks. This is not legal. It is extremely dangerous, and you can literally die within minutes mm. of somebody injecting something like this into your buttocks. So she is very, very fortunate, and I'm so glad she's sharing her story. Mm. Wow. I had no yeah. idea. Dr. Yoon, thank you so much. DBL Nation, be sure to follow Dr. Yoon on social media. You will not regret it. I love his account. You are the best. I know. You can check him out at Tony Yoon MD. We'll be right back. Bye, Doc. Bye, Bye Doc. Thank you. Happy holidays. Here at Verify, we want to help people avoid getting scammed. That's why we dedicated a whole section of our website to fact-checking scam claims. But sometimes viewers reach out to us for guidance after falling for a scam. If that's you or someone you know, here are three things our sources say you can do right now to protect yourself. One, report it. If you shared your banking information or social security number with a scammer, report the scam to police, your banking institutions, and credit bureaus. If scammers have your social security number, they can open up lines of credit in your name. Stop scammers in their tracks by calling all three credit bureaus and freezing your credit. If scammers have your bank account or credit card info, call the bank and ask them to reverse the transaction or give you your money back. Next, change your passwords and add two-factor authentication to your accounts. A lot of personal information is kept in online accounts, including your email address, bank account, and social security numbers. So having a secure password and changing it frequently is key. Just make sure to pick one that's at least 12 characters long and don't use the same password for multiple accounts. Now, if it's an option, set up two-factor authentication. That requires you or anyone else trying to log into your account to have a second factor, like a security code sent via text message to gain access. Finally, check your computer and other devices for signs of hackers. Is your antivirus program up to date and running? Well, if the computer is unable to run any programs or is running really slowly, that could be a sign that it's been hacked. Disconnect the computer from the internet and take it to a reputable computer technician for inspection. If you suspect your cell phone may be compromised, contact your mobile service provider. Once you have access to your devices again, change your passwords and your PIN numbers. We have an article on our website full of helpful numbers and links. To access it, scan this QR code right here on your screen. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Saying goodbye to your Christmas tree and going green at the same time. Let's connect the dots. First things first, take off all the decorations and ornaments. After that, you have a few options. Usually Christmas trees are not allowed in your curbside trash bin. Instead, many towns offer free tree pickup. You just put the tree 
on a curb. You can also cut it up yourself and put it in a yard waste bin. Yard waste programs will make sure your tree is mulched and recycled. If curbside pickup isn't an option for you, your local landfill or recycling center may be accepting trees into early January. They chip the trees to make compost. Recycling companies can also use old trees as erosion barriers to help stabilize beaches and shorelines. Trees can also be sunk into a pond to make a feeding area for fish. And if you live on a farm, stand your tree up in a corner of your property and use it as a sanctuary for birds and other animals. You can add pine cones filled with peanut butter. And that is Connecting the Dots. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. Welcome back. We've got some amazing products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. Steph, what do you have for us today? I am ready to shop. Hi, Tori, and hello, DBL Nation. I am so excited to show you the deal today. And trust me, as ever, they are fabulous, and you're going to fall in love with everything. So let's check it out. First up, we have got the Philips Sonicare Protective Clean Electric Toothbrush with a pressure sensor. So this deal comes with one toothbrush, one charger, and this cute little travel case. So normally, this is $92. Ooh, but we've got it for just $49.99. That saves you 44%. Now, our next product is super handy. It is the Rapid X MyPort Wireless Charging Power Bank and Dock. Okay. So this deal includes one power bank available in black or my favorite, gold. So normally this is $80, Tori, but we've got it for $24.99. Ooh. So that saves you guys 69%. Now, this next product product is the Shark Pet Perfect XL oh, I need this. cordless Ooh. handheld vacuum. So this deal includes one vacuum with various attachments. So normally there's are $80 Tory, yeah, I know. but we've got it for just $49.99. That's a saving of 38%. And our last product is the Power To Go Pro Lens Kit with LED light and travel case. Whoa. So this deal includes an 11 Seven piece set with different lenses, an LED light clip, a protective zipper case, and more. So normally this is $60, but right now it's just $14.99, which is saving you guys 75%. Head on over to morningsave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices you're gonna find, or just scan the QR code right on screen. It could not be easier. Thank you so much, Steph. Tori got half our Christmas gifts from Deal Blast. You were right. You know what happened? <laughs> My family said the same thing. Don't you? Don't be bringing home any Deal Blast gifts. Oh, Grandma, I had told oh. me she doesn't want them, but I'm like, why not? That's she said okay. you got to go buy it yourself. I said, all right, all right. All right, all right. DBL's new every day. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye, guys. <laughs>